Welcome to this video where we want to talk about repentance. It is so important that we preach repentance. And we want to talk about that and define what repentance truly is. Mm. The sad thing is that what you see in the church today in many places is that people are preaching faith. Faith to God, faith to Jesus without repentance. Mm. But we need to preach repentance. <laughs> It's not enough to say believe, you need to preach repent. Mm. When Jesus in Mark 1 started preaching, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, the time has fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So the first word that came out of Jesus' mouth was repent. They need to repent. Mm. Jesus was then priest in repentance, he died on a cross, he rose up again, he went to his disciples and he said to them something before ascending to heaven. And he said to them, this is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day raise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. So Jesus was saying that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed to all people then the whole the first disciple received the holy spirit and peter stood up in acts 2 38 and what did he say he did not just say believe in christ mm. believe in jesus he there said repent mm. turn away from your sin he said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins yes. and you shall receive the holy spirit we need to preach repentance but what is repentance what do we mean to repent and you can talk a little about what repentance is yeah first of all i just want to say what is not repentance because I think many people have misunderstood repentance because when people think repentance is only confessing your sin mm. and being remorseful, feeling sorry because you've done something wrong. Now the thing is this, it's okay to confess, it's okay to be remorseful, but that's not the only, that's not the full pictures, picture of what repentance is. Because true biblical repentance start with that we recognize that we have sinned sin. against a holy and righteous God and we are guilty. But it doesn't stop there. When we recognize, we start to turning away from our sin, to turn away from our lifestyle, sinful lifestyle, what we used to do before, like to stop drinking, to stop lying, to stop living life in sin yeah. you know the word the greek word for repentance means to rethink which is good but the interesting part the hebrew word for repentance means to turn and to turn again it means to turn away from your sin but and then after turn to god if, if people truly understand what faith in jesus is then of course they will repent because mm -hmm. it's not so much faith in jesus is it's not just believe in Jesus, it's believe Jesus. Mm. So if Jesus' first words was repent, and we believe Jesus, we therefore, of course, repent. Yeah. But we have met many people in the churches today who have misunderstood both what faith is, but also truly what repentance is. It's not just having a, a change of mind up here, it starts here, but repentance really go deeper, it's, mm. it's down here. It's something we do, we choose to repent. Mm. When we choose to repent and put our faith in God or in faith in Jesus, God is going to take out that stone heart and give us a new heart of flesh. Mm. It's like if you look at the, the heart, like, like the conscience, mm. Uh, the conscience is sharp in the beginning, but every time you, you do sin and go against your conscience, the conscience becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Mm. I remember many years ago I stole a bicycle. I was from a non-Christian family. I did not know God's law. I stole a, bi stole a bicycle, but I felt so bad. I felt so bad why my conscience mm. convicted me. Even without knowing God, I knew that was wrong. Next time I stole a bicycle, I felt less. Next time I felt even less. And next time I took something, I almost felt nothing. Mm. But just because you feel nothing 
don't mean that everything is okay because the conscience become weaker and weaker and weaker. Then I heard the law of God, the Ten Commandments. I saw God's standard and I saw how far I, far I have fallen. And then I changed. I repented. I felt sorry for my sins. I said sorry to God and I chose to turn away from my sins. When you do that, when I did that, God is then going to take that weak conscience, that stony heart, and he's going to give a new conscience, a heart of flesh, where he's going to write his law. And, and it is so concrete, it is so, um, it's so life-changing, mm. so you, you just know when it happens. Mm. And I went home to my sinful lifestyle, doing what I was used to doing, but when I did it again, oh, 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 I, I could not continue in sin because my conscience was now sharp. Mm. And, and you have also experienced it. Yeah, I, I've experienced it. And this is so real. The thing is, that's the same thing with me. Like before I became a Christian, I was going out, drinking, smoking, partying, and all this kind of stuff. But when I turn away from my sin, when I came to Christ and turned away from all my sin, as he explained, this, like, God comes to get and he gives that new heart where I had that new heart like before I could curse I could hurt people without feeling bad conscious but after repenting when I lie when I hurt him people when I did hmm. something was was wrong that it was screaming it was like oh this is wrong this is wrong because something new has started something clean and you just want to hold on to that yeah. And there is so impo important that after repent you take the next step that is baptism mm. water and then you need the holy spirit yes. so you can hold on to that clean conscience yes. you have now got yeah. what i really love with repentance is as i said it's so concrete in that way you you know when you are repented mm -hmm. it's not up here just it's, it's really down here you cannot keep on sinning i have met many uh, quote unquote christians who say they believe in God, but us who really have the faith in God, we know they don't believe, or they have misunderstood what faith in God is. But faith is so diffused um, for many, like, yeah, I believe, I believe, or maybe I believe, I don't know if I believe enough, or how much do you need to believe? Mm. But repentance is very like, you have repented or you are not repented. Yes. You have experienced what you don't have experienced. You have experienced what I have experienced. You know about that new conscience. You know about that suddenly you cannot do what you did before. You hate what you before loved. Mm. Many of you, most of you maybe who have seen this video, know what we are talking about. You have experienced the same. You who have not experienced it, you have no clue what we are talking about. You are lost. Mm. You are still lost. You are still in your sins. <laughs> because this is where Christian, where life with Jesus starts. This is where the new birth starts. And if you're not experienced that, you are still in your sins. It's not enough you have it up here. You need to have it down here. And remember, repent is something you do. Yeah. So when we baptize people uh, who have not repented, when we talk with them, we say, go and repent. Go and talk with God. Say you feel sorry for your sins and then change. You decide to turn away from your sins. And when you do that, God is going to give you a new heart. Yeah. Uh, I want to read a, a place here where it just um, is very, very clear. In 1 John 3, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. And you know that he, that is Jesus, appeared in order to take away sin. And in him, Jesus, there is no sin. No one who abides in him, no one who abides in him keep on sinning. And no one who keep on sinning have either seen him and or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Why is written here, let no one deceive you? Because this is an area where many, many, many people today are being deceived. Mm. They have a faith in God, but a wrong faith. They have a faith in Jesus, but don't understand faith. That is why I did two videos a short time ago where I talk about what faith is. is they think they have repented, but they have not repented yet. Mm. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appears was to destroy the work on, of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abide in him. Mm. And he cannot keep on sinning because he's born by God. By this is the evidence, or by this you know who's the son of God and who is the son of Satan. By this you know, not by who read the Bible, not by who have a faith in God, not by who have somehow faith in Jesus, not by who attend church on Sundays or but by this you know who is and who is not. If you have fully repented, mm. if you are born of God, you cannot go on sinning. You cannot have a practice of sinning. Mm. You experience like you and you experience like me. Mm. That is repentance. After repentance, you will do something that's wrong and then you ask forgiveness and Jesus is righteous and God is righteous to forgive you as John 1 9 is saying. So there is a difference between living a holy life and doing something that's wrong and you then repent and turn away from it and then keep on sinning. You cannot keep on sinning. You cannot have a sinful lifestyle if you are born again, if you have repented. Do you want to say something in the end? Yeah, I just want to say it is really, really important that, that we actually come back to the true understanding of repentance. Because repentance, it is part of the foundation mm. when we talk about the message of the gospel. And the saddest part of what we hear and see in the church, that there are so many people in the church who are actually really, really struggling in sin. Mm. And when we listen to their story and to hear why they're struggling in sin, it's because that many people are trying to live their Christian life without actually having repenting yeah. from the beginning. Because now we have taken that message, uh, or where we take the repentance out of the message of the gospel, where we're telling people, you need to only believe in Jesus yeah. and confess your sin, it's only confession, but not putting that message that repentance will turn away yeah. from our sin, then we have truly misunderstand everything. And we don't help people by that. No. We, we need to set people free and, and true repentance is beautiful. It's a change of heart. It's a new conscience toward God. And, and that is it's, it's so important it's where it starts. Mm. Maybe you think, yeah, but we honor the grace of God. Yeah, but true grace is not a license to sin. Mm. True grace is actually the ability to overcome sin and live in freedom. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. So we want to end up here saying, make sure you have repented. Make sure that you know what have experienced what we are talking about, what we read here. And you who have repented, Try to see how, not only what people are preaching, but what people are not preaching, mm. what is missing. It starts with repentance. Repentance is the foundation. We start preach, repent, and then afterward believe. It's not enough to just preach faith in Christ without repentance. Mm. See you next time. Hope you love this video. Share this video and make sure that people understand what repentance is. I want to recommend a book that is talking more about repentance, uh, the Bible. Read it. There is so many things about repentance here in the Bible. God bless you. Bye-bye.